G'day. In today's video, I'm opening up an Acer Aspire XC830. And this particular one, I believe, has got a failed hard drive. But also, as we can see from the specs, one terabyte hard drive, 128GB SSD, 4GB of DDR4, Pentium Silver J505. So fairly low wattage. Look at the back here, the giveaway for what we can upgrade to is very limited, being we run off a laptop charger. One comment that I saw regarding this is it's a desktop, a laptop hiding in a desktop skin, which is pretty much accurate. Considering, if you open it up, one screw out there, one screw out here. Once we open it up, we see not a lot inside the case. Open that up, we're pretty vacant. We have one board here, with laptop RAM here and here. We have a PCIe 16 times slot, surprisingly. But the dilemma that we've got, if you want to, were wanting to upgrade this for gaming, you will also need to buy a new power pack. This laptop power pack here, I think it converts to around a 65 watt charger. If we do the conversion of 19 volt to and buy 3.4 amp. So we've got about around a, around about a 65 watt charger. If you were wanting to upgrade to a low profile graphics card, you'd potentially have to change the case as well, depending if it's a single slot, as this won't really support the dual slot down here. Looking at this, being this slot here will correspond to the very bottom bracket. So if I was going to upgrade that graphics, I'd probably go for something like an RX 6400, just due to its low power usage or a GTX 1650 low-profile, or you'll need a low-profile version to fit in this particular case, and you will need a power supply upgrade. So if you do add in a dedicated GPU, you will require to add that. What I'm wanting to do now as well is replace the NVMe SSD, which I believe may be a SATA one down the bottom here. Um, no, uh, we are a PCI Express version, so we are an NVMe drive. Excellent. When you do replace one of these though, you will need to either clone it onto a new SSD or hard drive, or you'd be doing a complete reinstall of Windows. This one here I suspect has failed, so this is why I'm taking it out. We'll also hook it up to an enclosure to do it. Just using a small Phillips head screwdriver on this one. That is the screw here. That just lift it up. And I should just be able to walk it backwards, like so. That's it removed. To install a new one, we want to line up the gap here with the gap here. And I can zoom you in a bit more so I can actually see what I'm doing. There we go, now that's what I'm talking about. And this will slot in on about a 45 degree angle. Push in, push down, make sure it's pushed all the way across. And then this ring semi-circle down here should line up like so when that's lined up put the screw here and tighten while we're looking at it i might as well talk about upgrading the ram let's say you wanted to add a bit more ram to it you should be able to push those two tabs here and here outwards like so and it should flick up like that and we can grab it on the top and pull it back and we're now out so this is 8 gig of DDR4. I'm not sure what speed as the sticker is stuck over the top of the RAM. But I'm assuming it's probably going to be something like 3200 megahertz or 2666. This will... Ah, before I carry on there. Do note the notch here. The notch there. Put it in at a 45 degree angle. Pull it a little bit closer. So the gold has disappeared down here. Then push down. That's installed. Once it's installed, you don't have to do anything, just physically replace it, put it in. The motherboard and windows will do the rest for you. Same with over here. One thing to note, with this particular processor, the Pentium J5005, it will only handle a maximum of eight gig of RAM. According to the Intel side, it doesn't look to support any more than that. So once, if you've already got eight gig in there, it's probably very unlikely you could put two 
eight in each slot, one in each slot to make 16 and have it run correctly with that. It does seem to be only supporting up to eight gig. Now, if you want to replace your hard drive, we've got this one hard drive here. With that, we should be able to unscrew these four screws. We will have to take off the front plastic, which is here. There we go. You will all need to also eject the DVD drive to be able to take this out. Or pull it off the front here to be able to access the two Phillips head, or four Phillips head screws in the front. Bam, bam, bam. Disk drive back in man. There we go. Also, if you want to move it to a new case, it's very, or reasonably unlikely. Let me just quickly have a look. We have the front header connection down here. Front USB connection here. Or actually, front audio. USB 3. I believe this may be USB 2 for a card reader. This one here. Card reader. USB 3, audio, auxiliary power for the hard drive up here, and the DVD drive with the fan connector. So you could potentially put this into a new case as the IO shield is attached and will be removable, but you wouldn't be able to change it to a desktop power supply. You still have to run it off the laptop power supply. So due to that, there's really not much point moving it into a new case unless you're wanting to fit a new graphics card. But once you go down the path of new case, new power supply, graphics card, you're probably spending more than what the machine's worth and we're better off just simply selling this one to replace it. Once you've done whatever upgrades you would like to do in here, put the side panel back on, screw it on, you should be right to go from there. Anyway, I hope this helps and I'll see you guys later. Bye.